this is my simple solar setup. I have 45 watts at 12 volts here. These are amorphous panels, thin film, so they work in low light conditions. Uh, one of the biggest misnomers in the solar industry is your normal polycrystalline and monocrystalline panels are high efficient and they're way more efficient than the thin film. Well, that's true in a sense. Those panels were originally designed to work in space. They work in the near-infrared range. Down here on the surface of the planet, if you get a, any little bits of clouds, the panels damn near shut off. So in most areas of the country, 30% of the time, you're in low-light conditions. On average, the northern part of North America, you're going to get around 5 to 6 hours of usable light a day on average throughout the year. Now you factor in you're going to have 30% of that's going to be cloudy conditions. Most of the time your panels are going to be off. Your amorphous panels, on the other hand, will work in the low light conditions and still put out 80% of their rated capacity. The only drawback to the amorphous panels are you need more area to get the same output as the other panels. That's why they say the other panels are more efficient. If you put the same size panel side by side, yeah, the other panel is going to be more efficient, but if you let that efficiency uh, test run out for, say, two months, you're going to find out that the amorphous panel is going to put out more kilowatt hours over time than the other panels, just because of the fact that if you get a cloud, your polycrystalline, your monocrystalline panels shut off. These will stay on in low light conditions. The amorphous panels are the same type of thin film technology that was used in your little solar calculators that you turn on a light inside the house, powers calculator right up. These are the same thing, just scaled up. Um, that's why I'm going to stick with these and my whole system will be built with amorphous panels. Uh, they're heavy, so I built this little swivel base to be able to turn it throughout the day to, to track the sun. Uh, just because 45 watts isn't that much, so to, to, to keep up the output, I, I turn it throughout the day. Uh, then I got the wires go over here and go into the basement where I have the charge controller and the batteries, which I'll go down and show you guys that. Okay, here down in the lab is where the wires come in at. They're going to come into the little charge controller, and then from the charge controller, down to a 100 amp hour deep cycle of battery. From that battery I have it coming up here to a little terminal block that I take power off of to run my Bedini SG and do other experiments. Also off of that terminal block we come to one of the Lynx Jewel Lamps. Off of that jewel lamp or jewel ringer circuit for the LEDs follow these wires come up come across here and we go into the bathroom I took the normal AC light disconnected it wire nutted those wires off put me a little switch here running off of the jewel ringer to these lights here and voila we now have off the grid lighting and then again, that wire continues into the bedroom. Again, another switch. Same situation with this light off the grid. Coming out to the hallway, going to the upstairs. Again, the wires. Another switch. Off the grid. That one's on. This one is on. And these guys are on. This is the use case for these jewel ringers. Now if we come here into our little living room area, I have another positive and negative terminal block. Traced with wires from the battery over here again, just DC. Comes over here to a little inverter that we charge all of our devices with. I charge my vapor cigarette, um, both of the Samsung cell phones and the iPad. And here is the other jewel ringer circuit that I made. Those wires come down here to this lamp. I can take this off. You can see the little LED bulb in here. There's the one. 
And this one here, also the same situation. And this one. So there's a simple setup there to be able to get some lighting and charge all of your devices off the grid. Oh, another thing that we also do is we have the battery charger for the rechargeable NICADs. You know, these little guys. So every device in our house that uses batteries is now charged and ran off the grid. Uh, if you guys, I'll go back to the lab here. If you look and you catch these things on sale, you can get these little 45 watt uh, amorphous panel setups for, I think I think we paid 150 plus tax or something like that. Um, when I get another set here in about two weeks, I'm going to go ahead and get one of the Bendini 10 amp solar tracker chargers. Um, so I should be able to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, probably about 11 of those panels set up to be able to work with that charger. Um, this charger's crap, but, you know, it came with it, so I'm using it for now. Um, it does have a lot of nice features on there. You can put your cigarette lighter situations in there. You got a USB outlet, and then it also comes with two of the fluorescent bulbs. So, basically, there's the whole basement off the grid for lighting. Um, <clears throat> I haven't had a problem yet with running this 100 amp hour battery with this little bit of uh, 45 watts coming into it. I'm sure if I was to put a larger inverter and try running maybe the PlayStation or the TV, it would be way too much for it. Um, but my plans are once I get uh, that 10 amp charger, I hopefully I can get an inverter and maybe run our fridge and get that off the grid. So that's where we're at with this. What my plans here with this little carousel or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm either going to have this with a DC motor and a timer so it'll run by itself or to have it be completely independent of my normal battery bank I can get two small solar panels put one here at a 45 and one here at a 45. As the sun tracks around in the day it'll hit this panel and turn on and turn the DC motor on at the same time and slowly pull the panel with a little servo motor or something like that and move the whole setup. And then when the sun goes down it'll stay there. When the sun comes up in the morning it'll hit the panel on this side which will bring the whole thing back around and once it gets to a certain point it'll stop and then the sun will track over this way again, hit the other panel and start the process again throughout the day. <clears throat> so there's two, two use cases for this or two ways to do this I should say. Um, of course it wouldn't be made out of wood, it'd be made out of an aluminum frame, so it's lightweight, this thing's heavy as hell. Um, some other things I want to say about solar panels is, it's best to stick with your 12 volt or your 24 volt systems. Um, reason being is, if you've got an inverter that goes out, or you got problems somewhere, and you're running off of 12 volts, and you have a lot of things in your house that are running off of 12 volts, you're still going to be able to run those things if your inverter goes out. Um, you know, a lot of the systems are using these maximum power point tracking things, and you got solar panels that are putting out 250 volts that are coming in. You know, if, you're, if your charge controller goes down or your inverter goes down, you can't use your panels for nothing. You're screwed. Um, you know, if you stick with a basic 12-volt system, you see right now, I have lighting in my house. Um, you can do a lot of things with 12 volts. There's so many things on the market for 12 volts. It's just best right now to stick with the 12-volt technology and uh, the amorphous panels are seem, seem to be where it's at. So, um, yeah. Thanks for watching.